All right, so down into seated. You can be on your knees, whatever position feels comfortable, just on your mat. Sit nice and tall, relax the shoulders. Hands, just rest them on your knees or in your lap. Take a nice big, deep inhale. And as you exhale, let's close down those eyes and bring the focus to the breath this morning. Well done for arriving at your mats, for setting aside this time for your practice today. So noticing the breath as it enters and as it leaves the body. Feel the way that the body reacts to the breath. And just relax and from the top of the head, think about working through the facial muscles, just softening the brow, smoothing down the cheeks, relaxing the jaw. So just allow those facial muscles to be soft. Relax the tongue within the, the mouth as well. Lengthen up through the back of the neck, let the shoulders drop down away from the ears. Keep the spine nice and tall. Then pull the rib cage back towards the spine slightly so that we bring some activation into our lower core muscles. Just a slight activation. But as you inhale and exhale, you can feel the breath moving the belly. Then feel the contact of the sitting bones with the mat. Feel your connection with the earth and just ground yourself before we start. Let the hips be relaxed as well. Sometimes sitting in this position is uncomfortable for the hips. Just try to release any tension that you are holding on to there. So let the knees just drop down. Awesome. So you've just worked through the body, one body part at a time, just releasing. And just noticing what's going on for you. If you are holding an injury, Please be aware of it throughout, throughout the practice. As always, listen to your inner teacher. Your body will tell you what it needs and how far it needs to go. Listen to it. When it says stop, make sure you stop. Okay, so a few more breaths sitting here. Lengthening and deepening the inhale. Making sure that the exhale is complete. And this morning, I'd like you to think of three things that you are grateful for. It could be anything at all. It doesn't matter how small or how big those things are. Just three things that you are grateful for. And just in turn, bring them to the front of your mind. And maybe they can be your focus for practice today. When you're ready, bring your hands into prayer at heart centre. Pressing the thumbs into the sternum. Take a moment, take a breath. As we inhale, let's set the hands up to the ceiling. Interlace the fingers, push them up and away. Get a nice big stretch here. And then as you exhale, bring the hands in front of you and round the spine, bring the chin into the chest. Let's repeat that a few times. So inhale, take the arms up. Pushing the palms up towards the ceiling and then exhale, round the spine, chin comes into the chest. Do this at your own pace. Inhale, work with the length of your breath. Take it up as you inhale and exhale, round the spine. Let's do one more. Inhale, take it up. And then exhale, just round the spine. Bring the chin into the chest and then release. Just let it go. Come over the knees and into our tabletop. So spreading those fingers out, making sure the knees are directly underneath the hips. Push the floor away with the hands so it's a nice strong box shape and then bring the big toes together to touch, push your bottom back onto your heels, bring the forehead down to the floor to take a child's pose, extend and reach those fingertips as far forward as you can, keeping the fingers nicely spread out. Good, push down into the hands, look forward and let's slide ourselves down to lay down onto our tummies, untuck the toes, keep the elbows tight into the ribs. As you inhale, just lift the chest, come into a baby cobra, exhale, lower the chest down. So inhale, lift the chest, look forward, 
exhale to lower and one more lift the chest up exhale lower it down slowly push yourself up into your tabletop and all the way back into your child's pose coming up into tabletop once more hands and knees step the left foot in between the hands so left foot steps forward so we're in a low lunge position keeping the hands down on the floor push down with the right hand take the left hand up to the sky look up towards it then take that hand down to the outside of the front foot and take the right hand up towards the ceiling good now lift yourself up so we're into a little twist and sink into those hips here all right release the hands back down frame that front foot tuck the back toe under let it step forward into a ragdoll position just allowing the body to hang over the legs let the fingertips just lightly touch the floor soften the knees if you need to and then slowly roll up the spine into a standing position the head comes up last take the arms up to the sky reach up palms touch at the top exhale slowly fold forward into your forward bend position step back with the left foot lower the left knee down onto the floor untuck the back toes so you're in that low lunge position again keep the left hand down take the right hand up to the sky open up look up towards your top hand if that feels okay for the neck then bring the hand to the outside of the foot take the left hand up good just hold for a moment here then lift your body up so you're opening yourself up towards the left hand side of your mat so open the chest here and then cartwheel your hands down to frame that front foot tuck the back toe under let's step back into a plank position make it nice and strong here and then lower down either chaturanga or knees chin and chest push through into a back bend and then let's find our downward facing so tuck the toes under i want you to keep the knees bent so keep your knees bent lift them off and hover and push your chest back so we're on heels are lifted and knees are bent start by moving the chest back and just hold here for a breath or two first so you get that lovely stretch through the back and then straighten the right leg keep the left knee bent so we're just going to do a little pedal of the legs and then switch over so bending the right knee pushing the left heel to the floor good repeat that on both sides so bending the left and then let's bend with the right okay let's Go for full down dog now. So both heels are pushing towards the mat. And we're just settling into this posture, ensuring that we've got equal pressure into those hands. Let your head hang nice and heavy. Lift your tailbone high. So at all times, moving the chest back towards the thighs. Make it strong here. Just notice what space you've got around your ears as well. Breathe in. Exhale, heels go down to the floor. Walk your hands to your feet. So we're going to the back of the mat, bring them onto your shins, lift halfway, so lengthen through the spine, as you exhale, fold deeper, bend the knees if necessary, pull yourself in nice and tight. Now soften the knees a bit more, bring your left hand to the floor, take your right hand to the sky and straighten up through the right leg. So we're stretching that right hamstring, you can look directly forward or up towards that top hand. Good. let's release that down soften the knees again switch the hands over so reaching up with the left hand straightening the left leg good feel that lovely stretch down the back of the left leg and then release it off soften both of the knees walk it forward back into your plank position get it nice and strong hold it here spread the fingers out nice and wide now let's lower chaturanga or knees chin chest push through into your back bend exhale into downward facing dog good walk the feet forward so coming up to the top of the mat halfway lift exhale to fold inhale let's bring it up reach the hands to the sky bring them into prayer at heart center as you exhale take the arms up interlace your fingers pointers release take it over towards the left for a side bend pushing the hips out to the right squeeze the ears with the arms Good, so feet together, if we can, if we need a bit more stability, take them apart a little, then go a bit deeper if you can. 
bring it back to center, lift up higher, go the other way. So taking it over towards the right, push the hips out to the left. Squeeze the ears with the arms, really extend those arms. Go a little deeper if you can. Bring it back to center. Exhale, forward fold. Good, step back with the right foot. Drop the hips down, lift the chest, look forward. As you inhale, raise your arms up into your high lunge position. Now let's sink into this lunge, try to get the front thigh parallel to the floor. Pull the rib cage back towards the spine. Hold it there. Good, take the arms out into crucifix. Let's wrap the left arm, no sorry, the right arm underneath the right. So we're coming into eagle arms. Okay, so if you can get your hands into prayer, if not, you can just grab your thumb or maybe just hook opposite shoulders. So into eagle arms. You want to bring the elbows up so that they're level with the shoulders. Okay, we're going to put the weight into the left foot so we can bring the right leg up and over and wrap into eagle legs. So wrapping that leg up and over, tuck the toes behind the calf if you can into full eagle posture. Then squeezing the arms, squeezing the legs together. Sit down a little, but keep the chest lifted. Good. Lovely detoxification posture here. Take another breath, squeeze even tighter. Keep the arms interlaced, release the leg. Push the foot back into warrior three with eagle arms. And then lower that foot down to the back of the mat. Turn yourself to side on, push the heels out. As you inhale, take your elbows up to the ceiling. And then as you exhale, let's bow it all the way down. Inhale, let's take it all the way up. Elbows up to the ceiling. Exhale, bow it down. You can soften the knees if necessary. One more, inhale, take it up. And exhale, take it all the way down. Now just allow the arms, the upper body to hang. So let gravity take effect here. Let the head go and then really feel the stretch through the back of the legs. You can untangle the arms, bring the hands down onto the floor. If you wish, if you want to go deeper, walk those hands further back. But just working carefully into the back of those legs to begin with. Good, let's walk towards our left foot so we can rotate to bring ourselves back into that lunge position. So the runner's lunge, hands are at the top of the mat, framing the front foot. Kick the leg into the sky for three-legged dog, and then bring it forward to plank. Keep that leg lifted if you can. Push it back into plank. Uh, sorry, <laughs> three-legged dog. Bring it forward to your plank. Do that once more. Lift that leg into the sky. Bring it forward into your plank position. Keep it lifted or bring it to the floor as we lower to Chaturanga. Inhale to up dog. Exhale into downward facing dog. Well done, just reset your down dog. Make sure the feet are hip distance, the hands are shoulder distance apart. Look forward, bend the knees, jump or step. The feet to the top of the mat, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Well done, root to rise. Arms come up to the sky. Bring them into prayer at heart center. Well done, inhale. Take those arms up nice and high. Exhale into forward fold. Step back with the left foot. Drop the hips. Lift the chest and look forward. Raise your arms to the sky, high lunge position. Sink into it. Good, so try and get this thigh parallel to the floor. So we can always soften that back knee if we need to go deeper, if it's too much for your hip flexors. Take the arms out to the side, left arms coming under the right, wrap it up into eagle. So palms touch or thumb grab or shoulder hold. So look forward, bring the elbows up to shoulder height so that we can open up the space through the shoulder blades. Now take the weight into the right foot as we bring the left knee forward and wrap it over the right. Tuck the toes behind the calf. Try and keep your hips square to the front of the mat. Keep the elbows lifted, sit down a little deeper, squeeze the arms, squeeze the legs. Core is on. Gaze is steady forward. Good. Hold for another breath. Then we keep the arms interlaced as we 
release the leg and push back into our warrior three position. Slowly lower that foot all the way to the back of the mat. Okay, straighten the legs and turn towards that side edge of the mat. I'm just gonna turn around. Now bring your feet in slightly so we can do 10 to two feet. Okay, so we don't be wide like we were before. Keeping in our eagle, sit down into your goddess squat. So trying to get the bum down to level with the knees. I'm gonna do our eagle lift again. So as we inhale, elbows to the sky, exhale, fold it down. Keep your legs as they are. Inhale, just raise the arms. Exhale, roll it down. Good, one more. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, roll it down and hold here. Release your hands to the floor. Now drop your bottom down. Drop your bottom down as far as you can. And then lift the hips to the sky, straighten the legs, push the heels out. Walk towards your right foot. And then kick that leg back into the sky for three-legged dog. So lift it up to the sky. So right leg should be lifted. Okay, let's bring it forward to plank. Keep that leg lifted off the floor. And push back, three-leg dog. And forward. And push back. One more time, bring it forward to plank. Keep the leg lifted or lower it down before taking your chaturanga. Push through into up dog. Exhaling into downward facing dog. Fabulous, take some breaths here. If you need to drop the knees to the floor and take a child's pose, please feel free. About five breaths. Just resetting the breath, the mind, the practice. Awesome. After that fifth breath, look forward, bend at the knees, jump or step your feet to the top of the mat, halfway lift here. Exhale, let's fold over those legs. Bring the feet back. Bring the hands back level with the feet, sorry. Hands back level with the feet. And try to bring your nose towards your knees or shins. Lift the tailbone, take weight into the balls of your feet. Really feel that stretch. Good, soften off. Inhale, arms come to the sky. And exhale, hands come into prayer at heart center. Big deep breath in. Open the mouth, sigh it out. Fabulous, weight goes into the left foot. We're gonna bring the right knee into the chest. Take that foot all the way to the back of the mat, into your high lunge position. Take your hands behind your back and either reverse prayer up your back or opposite elbow grab. It's up to you. Straighten off both of the legs. And then if you need to take your feet wider so you're on train tracks, it will give you a bit more stability. Okay, so both legs strong and straight. Inhale, lift the chest. And then exhale, push that left hip back as you bring your left chest down onto the left thigh, looking in front of that left big toe. Good. So really working with the hips here. So push your left hip back, bring your right hip forward so the hips are nice and square. Keep the shoulders open by squeezing the prayer behind your back or grabbing those opposite elbows. Good. Let's see if you can take that a little bit deeper. And then as you inhale, let's bring it all the way back up. Slowly release off the arms. Take them out into a crucifix position. Now we're going into balancing half moon, but we're going to revolve it. So your right hand is going to reach just in front of that left foot. And then as we transfer the weight, we can lift the right leg up into the air and the left, le left arm reaches towards the ceiling. So we're revolving our balancing half moon. Good, look down to your hand, or if you've got the balance, look up towards your top hand, but flex the right foot, flex it. Push the heel towards the back edge of the mat. Nice, hold it for another breath, really make it strong. Slowly lower that foot all the way down, ground the heel, and come up into your warrior two. So we should be looking towards our left middle finger, hopefully, are we there? Yay, 
<laughs> bend nice and deep push this knee towards the little toe turn the palms forward and then tilt down bringing the fingertips inside the foot the right hand reaches to the sky holding here for three breaths squeezing the hip under pulling the right shoulder back look towards the top hand good pull it back a little bit more with the shoulder and then release both hands down frame that front foot lift the heel of the back foot step back into plank take your vinyasa from here whatever version you're chewy, choosing to go with moving back into downward facing five breaths awesome well done make sure that the neck is nice and relaxed the shoulders are soft here spread those fingers wide push your heels to the floor lift your tailbone a little bit higher you can bend the knees and move your chest further back and then re-straighten the legs to take it deeper and then after the fifth breath look forward bend at the knees jump or step feet to the top halfway lift now fold over your legs sweep the arms to the sky reach up bring them into prayer at heart center well done okay just to reset the breath and let's do the same thing on the other side so bringing, I'm just going to change sides here. So bring the left knee into your chest. Hold for a moment and then push it back. Step that foot all the way back and into a high lunge position. Take your arms behind your back, reverse your prayer or opposite elbow grab. If you're doing the elbow grab, try and do it the other way around this time. Okay. And then straighten your legs. Maybe take the feet a little wider square the hips towards the front edge of the mat straighten those legs nice make them strong lift the chest exhale fold down bringing the right chest down onto the right thigh if it's too much you can shorten your stance and keep a slight softness into that front knee look in front of your big toe and then go even deeper push that right hip back bring the left hip forward good go deeper just work with your breath and again as i said at the beginning listen to your body it will tell you where it needs to go if you need to back off then just back off so really feel that stretch push that right hip back bring the left hip forward and then let's slowly rise back up release the arms out into our crucifix shape now this left hand is going to so we're going to twist the torso and bring the left hand down in front of the right foot take the weight so we can then lift the left leg into the air the right arm up towards the ceiling for our revolved balancing half push the left heel to the back of the room either look down towards your hand or you can take your gaze up if you prefer good really extend that back leg make it strong make this supporting leg super strong as well push the floor away with it slowly lower that back foot onto the mat ground the heel down open yourself into warrior two look towards right middle finger push this knee out towards your little toe so don't allow the knee to collapse in turn the palms forward then tilt it down bring the hand inside the leg look up towards your top hand good and then squeeze the right hip under pull the left shoulder back and just find your breath three deep inhales and exhales here keep squeezing that hip under keep moving that shoulder back lovely then release both hands down let's frame that front foot lift the back heel off the floor step back into plank position lower chaturanga inhale to up dog and exhale into downward facing brilliant maybe bring the knees down if you prefer to take a child's pose just take a few breaths here just really just find that lovely breath pattern that we started our practice with all right if you all want to just come down onto hands and knees so back into tabletop position we're going to move from there so bring the knees down onto the floor just ensuring that the left hand and left knee are in line with each other we're going to step the right foot back take the right arm up so it's a modified side plank and just double check that the shoulder is directly over this wrist 
So it's nice and strong base of support. If you want to do this as a full side plank, please do so, all right? We are going to lift the top leg. So if you do the full side plank, it's a bit of a challenge, go for it. So either modified or full, lift this leg up so it's parallel with the floor, flex the foot and hold it here. Then reach the arm as far forward as you can to get a lovely line through the body. Hold it here. So pushing that heel as if there's a wall, you try to push the wall down, really extend. Good, now bring it back up, bring the heel to the bum, reach back and get hold of the foot with the hand. Try to push the foot even further back and turn the chest so we're looking over the shoulder towards the ceiling. So opening up, so as much space between this foot and the bottom as you can, really open that chest up. Okay, let's release it back out again, bring the foot down to the floor. We're going to step the left foot forward into our um, fallen star, turn the chest, look up towards that right hand. And then the challenge is to lift that bottom leg off the mat. Lift it off, off the mat, keep it lifted, bring the hand down, and then take that leg up to the sky for your three-legged dog. Bend the knee and open up the hip. Push your right heel down to the mat. Fabulous. Take a moment here, really lifting that knee as high as you can, then straighten it back off and bring the foot back down to the floor. Have a little pedal out of the legs. Take a vinyasa here if you wish. This is optional, or you can just wait for the other side. To start the other side, we just need to lower those knees back down and into our tabletop once more. Ensuring that we have the right hand underneath the right shoulder. So we can step the left foot back and the left arm reaches up. So we're in the modified side plank again. Those of us who want to go for the full side plank, please feel free, lift the left leg up so it's parallel with the mat, flex the foot, make it strong, <clears throat> excuse me, reach that arm forward and hold for a few breaths here. Really flex the back foot, push it as if you're trying to push a wall over. Extend those fingertips further, make that side of the body as long as you possibly can. Lovely, bring it back up. Bend at the knee, bring the heel to the bum, reach back and catch hold. Then start turning the chest, looking over the left shoulder towards the ceiling, kicking that foot back. Don't allow the thigh to drop. So if you're in the full side plank, impressive. <laughs> Stay with it. Slowly release out. Good, let's bring that foot down to the floor, stepping the right foot through. So we can open the chest again, look towards the left hand in your fallen star and then lift that bottom leg. This is optional. Hold it there, keep it lifted. Hand comes down, kick it back into your three-legged dog. Bend the knee and open the hip, pushing the left heel down, lifting that right knee as high as we can. Good, breathing here. Keep equal pressure through the shoulders through the hands so the shoulders aren't twisting. Good, take another breath, straighten it off. Bring the foot back down, downward facing dog. Optional vinyasa here, so forward to plank, lower to chaturanga. Push through into back bend. Everybody knees down and sit it back into your pose of a child. Fabulous, well done. Make some circles with the wrists if they're feeling it. Just take a couple of breaths. Good. Well done. Good work, everybody. Bring yourself into your tabletop once more. We're just gonna stretch out through the shoulders, take the arms up to the top edge, top corners of the mat. Now keep your hips above your knees with this one. So taking the arms wide, bring your chin and chest down to the floor for puppy posture. If it's too much, you can place your forehead on the floor. But if you can get your chin and chest down, the arms can go wider or further, further away if it feels better for you and just work with this stretch. But the tailbone is tilted and we're lifting the tailbone to the ceiling and trying to get the chest down. Good. 
Sink the chest down, try and release through the shoulders if you can. And then we're slowly going to slide our way forward onto our tummies and untuck those toes. Bring the heels in towards the bottom. Let's reach back and get hold of the feet for our bow posture. If this is too much, we can do this one leg at a time. Okay? So if you want to do it one leg at a time, please go for that instead. But keeping the knees from splaying too wide. And we start by pushing the feet back into the hands, lifting the thighs off the floor. Once the thighs are lifted, then we can start lifting the chest, lifting the gaze, look forward. Squeeze those shoulder blades together so we can lift higher. Good, keep the core engaged. Keep breathing. We have to forget to breathe in this posture. We keep kicking back and lifting. This is a back bending practice. So just be mindful of that. Lift a little higher, exhale. Release, but keep hold of the feet. If you're doing one leg at a time, switch to the other leg now. We're going to do another one. Are you ready? Let's lift up. Keep the feet back. Lift the thighs and then lift the chest. If we are in the full posture, let's see if you can bring your big toes together to touch and then start squeezing your knees a bit closer towards each other. So bring those big toes in. Keep the chest lifted, shoulder blades squeezing. Lift up, exhale lower. Hands come underneath the head and let's just rock the feet from one side to the other. Release off any tension that we put into the lower back. Good, well done. All right, bring your hands under the shoulders. Go through a child's pose. Just take a moment there. And slowly bring it up into a kneeling position. So ensuring that you have space behind you, we're going to take stretch for the front of the thighs. So reclined hero posture. You want to make sure that your calf muscles are out of the way so you can sit your bottom down in, in between your heels. If that's too much on the knees, then get some cushions or anything to just pop underneath your bottom. Okay. And then there's loads of stages with this posture. So choose which one is the best for you. Stage one is the hands come behind, fingertips are pointing forward. And then we lift the hips up. So you get the stretch coming through the front of the body. The head can go back if it feels all right for the neck. All right, if you want to take this deeper, then you can come down onto your forearms and do the same thing again, lifting the hips up. Or you can lay down completely on the shoulder blades. It's up to you. But we're just lifting those hips up so you make sure that you've got some air underneath your bottom, a bit of space between your bum and the mat or cushions that you started on. And you should feel the stretch coming all the way up through the front of the body. Let the head go back if that feels nice. And then breathe. Really lift those hips high. And then exhale, slowly lower them back down again. Bring your hands up so you bring your hands so you can lift yourself back up carefully and then into your tabletop. Give your feet a little bash. It also stretches out the front of the feet, that one. So just release it out. Take a few circles with your ankles in one direction, then the other. And release. Fab. Okay. Inversion time. Cinch your on your knees. Great place to go for headstand. If you prefer to do waterfall or a shoulder stand, go for it. If you're going to join me in headstand, you can do a tripod or a basket headstand. I'm going to go through basket. So basket, we interlace the fingers. We bring the elbows down to shoulder distance apart, interlace the fingers, make that little nest with the hands. And then we cradle the back of the head. And then push down strongly through the elbows so that we can use the strength in our shoulders to help us with this posture. Okay, and then tuck the toes and lift the hips nice and high. Now, if you don't want to go into a full headstand, then just stay with this posture, stimulating the crown chakra and getting your hips as nice and high as you can. So push down as the elbows, lift the hips, come onto your tippy toes, and then you might be able to lift one foot up into a little tuck position, the other leg up. Okay, if you are familiar with the full posture and you want to take it, please feel free. So going up nice and steady, activating everything once you're there. 
keeping the core nice and strong so that we protect the back. <clears throat> I can see some headstands in the room, that's awesome, well done. But as I said, if you don't want to go up, then this headstand prep is enough, all right? Always make sure that your elbows don't splay too wide and we're just lifting the hips into the sky and getting used to having that weight in the head. Okay, so hold it for as long as you feel comfortable with. It may be if that isn't for you, then just laying on your back with your legs in the air in waterfall is plenty. This is a really beneficial posture. I often get my children to do this if they are a little bit wired before bed because it helps to calm them down. It's really good because it puts obviously no stress on the neck area and it's great for draining the lymphatic system. All inversions and things like this are great for boosting your metabolism, stimulating the thyroid, and just getting fresh, rich, rich oxygen to the brain. So wherever you go, just choose a posture that works for you. And day to day, those postures will change as well. Some days you really don't feel like going upside down, but that's fine. Listen to your body. When you're finished with your inversion, slowly release it back down. If you were in a headstand, you may want to take child's pose for a few moments. If you were in shoulder stand, just bring it down really steady, nice and slowly. We will all meet laid on our backs when you're done. Okay, so laying down the backs, bring the knees into the chest, we'll take a happy baby. So taking the arms inside the knees, get hold of the outside edges of the feet, and then take the soles of the feet up towards the ceiling. So we're trying not to lift the bum off the floor, but keeping the spine down, and then pulling the knees towards our armpits. If you can't get hold of the feet, you can do this by just holding on to the ankles. It's quite nice to have a little sway here as well. You can rock from side to side, but try to keep the neck, shoulders relaxed and as much of the spine as possible in contact with the mat. If you've got nice hamstrings, you can extend one of those legs out to the side and then bring it back in and you can extend the other one out. And then bring it back in. If you want to do both, go for it. See what happens, extend the legs out, get that lovely stretch. Again, this is quite nice to rock from side to side in this position. When you haven't got all those pe other people around you in the studio, you don't have to put, there's nobody else in your space. Good, and then bring it back in. Well done, knees into chest. Give it a last squeeze in, take your arms out into a crucifix or cactus, drop your knees over to the left side to twist out the spine. Keep the shoulders flat down, look in the opposite direction to the knees, breathe into that side body twist. So this right rib cage, think about expanding it with your breath. And release it, bring the knees back through center, let's take them over to the other side. Again, shoulders stay down, look in the opposite direction, then breathe into the left side rib cage and release it awesome okay last thing to do is to find that position to take your shavasana extending the legs down and away from you or if the lower back is bad keep the knees bent feet on the floor then take the feet wider and knock the knees together that's quite nice if the lower back isn't great otherwise extend those legs fully palms are facing up wherever they may be let the head rest where it feels most comfortable. And then close down the eyes, take a nice big deep inhale. Open the mouth and sigh out. And then let the breath return back to its normal natural rhythm. Noticing the rise and the fall of the chest. How your body is feeling now, if you can feel the energy moving around, if there's any feelings, any sensations, little pins and needles, any buzzing sensations within. Just be aware. So 
the heart is racing, use the breath to calm it. If the mind is racing, again, let's use the breath to calm it. As you exhale, release those thoughts that we don't need to be thinking about right now. Just acknowledge them as they come into the mind, but then let them go. And then starting at the top of the head, smooth the forehead, relax the brow, the cheeks are soft, the jaw is relaxed, the tongue within the mouth is relaxed. <clears throat> the back of the neck is long, the shoulders are soft and open to the mat. The palms are facing up, so the chest is open, the arms are extended and soft and then just work down the body through the torso the hips release any tension there let the leg muscles soften and grow heavier let the feet just flop out to either side if the legs are extended and then feel your body as a whole in contact with the mat Feel that connection. Be still. Let's remember those three things that at the beginning of the practice you were grateful for. Whatever they may be, just bring the image of those three things to the front of your mind. Maybe one at a time, maybe all together. And keep them there as you start making some small movements with your fingers, your toes. Take the arms up and overhead for a full body stretch. And then draw those knees into the chest, give yourself a squeeze, hug them in, and then rolling slowly from side to side before coming over onto your right side. You can rest here for a breath or two before pushing yourself back up into seated position. Let's try and keep the eyes closed just whilst we seal our practice together. So sit. With the tall spine and relax the shoulders down away from the ears. Just equalize the breath within and around the body. Bring your hands to prayer at heart center. Giving thanks to your inner teacher for guiding you. I thank you all for joining me on your mats. It's been a pleasure to guide you through your practice this morning. Namaste.